Hey, it's Fit Gear Hunter for a review of the optical heart rate sensor for the Sunto 7. So I'm gonna begin doing more in-depth reviews of the optical heart rate sensors on the watches I test for the specific purpose of CrossFit and high intensity interval training, because it's one thing just to sort of say that they're off and it's another thing to be able to gauge exactly how much they're off. The thing that I mention in every review is that we're testing devices for CrossFit and high intensity interval training and the one thing we know is that we do a lot of wrist flex and those types of movements and workouts. And so you have to have a chest strap if you wanna have accurate results. But that's the question I wanna bring up is how accurate or inaccurate are the results from an optical heart rate sensor depending on the device we use. And so up today is the Sunto 7. So let's get into a hands-on review. One thing I forgot to mention is I'm gonna base the heart rate test a minor amount on the comparison to the average heart rate as it compares to a chest strap and a major amount on the comparison of the amount of time tracked in the upper zones. So specifically the zone five of the heart rate zone, you know, it depends on what your max heart rate is, but the highest level heart rate zone as compared to a chest strap. So if a watch can accurately pick up the most intense portions or the time spent in the most intense heart rate zone, then it'll give you accurate assessment of the impact of the workout, workout on your fitness and your training load and your overall training scores. So minor amount on the average heart rate, major amount, 80% of the tests on the amount of time in the upper level zone, specifically the zone five. And then within certain watches that I have a comparison of their own metrics versus their own metrics with a you know chest strap versus otherwise, like with Polar or with Sunto, they're using a training effect versus Garmin's training effect. I can add a little bit of a calculation in there. So that's how we're gonna do the testing. Okay, so this is the heart rate monitor on the Sunto 7. So obviously it's gotta have sort of a felt skin presence, but there's just two main diodes that are firing. I started a workout so that it would be relatively going in hot, but that's all you get on the heart rate sensor here on the Sunto 7. Okay, so what do we see on the first test? And we're just gonna look at a series of pictures. So this is the first workout, a couple lifting elements and a, met, a Metcon that I believe was a 25 minute time cap. Here on the chest strap, the H10 connected to a Garmin, average heart rate of 20, 129, aerobic effect of 3.8, and 14 minutes in the red zone, the peak zone above 158 beats per minute. What do we see on the Sunto? 100 beats per minute average versus 129. And the 2.1 you know, training effect versus 3.8, but the biggest thing is on the bottom. 29 seconds in the red zone, and then really only a, a, a minute 50 in the next highest zone, the orange zone and the yellow zone, 45 seconds versus a totally different time in the heart rate zone graph there. What is this? Okay, so another workout, snatch pull, metabolic conditioning at the end. So this is 15 minutes of, of higher uh, conditioning. So you have 120, 24 beat per minute average, 3.1 on the aerobic, 99 on the Sunto versus again, 124 and zero seconds in the red zone versus 6.46. So another relative failure, it picked up no seconds in the peak highest red zone, no seconds in the orange zone, no seconds in the yellow zone versus a much more blended graph. So it completely missed the boat on that one. So again, lifting with, um, the Metcon of 12 minutes. So you can see how the heart rate graph looks, 117 beats per minute average versus 105 at the top here, 2.9 PTE versus 3.1. Now that's might be, but you look at the graph over the end of the workout on the Garmin and the peak red zone, all continuous because it's a 12 minute Metcon, nine minutes, 44 seconds in the red zone. And it did pick up a little bit at the end. So it did at least capture some time in the red zone, whereas the previous workouts failed to capture any in the red, most of the orange and even the yellow. Another workout, this one was a, had a higher intensity to it across the board. So 139 beat per minute average, 3.4, 114, unfortunately, on the Sunto. Time in the red zone, 205. First time in the red zone, one 
minute, 10 seconds. Again, it missed, so it did pick up. So every minute on the minute lifting in the beginning and did pick up some of that. And it did pick up some of the Metcon at the end, just not nearly the same amount. So here's one that was relatively frustrating. So some lifting in the beginning, you can see just the chart as you see the graphs, 148 beats per minute average, some intense rounds for time with a three minute break in between, 123 beats per minute average on the Sunto, and it just missed. So 14 minutes in the red zone versus zero minutes in the red zone. So that is a big impact on your cardiovascular load. When you have 14 minutes in the red zone and then almost 18 minutes in the orange zone, and then on the Sunto, it's picking up 15 seconds in the red zone, then four minutes in the orange. So way off the mark. So it's one thing to say, okay, well, it's 148 beat per minute average versus 123. That sounds closer. But if you're evaluating the intensity of the aerobic effect, you've really got to look at how much time you spent in the higher heart rate zones. And this is off the mark. Again, workout today, some rounds of back squat, and then um, what turned out to be uh, 11 to 12 minute uh, Metcon. So you see the lifting, the back squats, and then the Metcon on the tail end. Nothing, total failure. I mean, look at the difference between these two graphs. So you see each little round of the back squat because there were, you know, reps, you know, five reps for every round. And then you see the Metcon at the end. You see nothing here, nothing. I mean, it just doesn't, he's non-existent. So what do you get? You get zero time in the red zone, 31 seconds in the orange, 56 seconds in the yellow versus eight and a half minutes in the red, five in the orange. So these scores, I don't even know they're getting these scores. So 89 beat per minute average versus 119, that's fine. You know, the training effect, how did they give me a training effect of 1.3 if I did nothing or they thought I did nothing? The recovery of zero hours, I think it was reversed 22 hours on the Garmin. So again, just a complete failure. Let's come back together for a summary. Okay, so what do we see? We see, unfortunately, I mean, I love the design of this watch and I love the screen. I love actually very comfortable with the Wear OS platform now, but the optical heart rate sensor is terrible and they do not allow it to connect by Bluetooth chest strap to a heart rate chest strap. So what do we see about some of the statistics? So it's 80% accurate when compared to the average heart rate when compared to the average heart rate on a chest strap. Now that's across a long one hour class where there's some lifting elements and maybe multiple lifting elements and then usually a, a 12 to 25 minute um, AMRAP or WATT or Metcon. So there's more intensity workout on the tail, but across the 60 minutes, it's about 82% accurate. So I would say that's still kind of an F rating, even though it's kind of a B as far as we know it. When you look at a comparison between the training effect evaluation between what Sunto is now doing on their own on the Sunto 7 versus the first beat analytics off Garmin, they're about 70% of the same value. I don't know how Sunto is coming up with their specifics, but we'll just take it for what it is. But the last and most important is how does this hold up in an intense workout just specifically in that 12 to 25 minute Metcon where we're really tracking intensity, but also taking into account when there's some intensity built up in the lifting zones. So it's 19%. So 19% accurate when it comes to higher intensities. That's a total F. So I'd give this absolute, you know, the overall score. So in grand finale, because of the weighting towards the zone five portion, the final score for the Sunto 7 is a 42. So an F minus, so 42% is accurate. So 58% is not accurate. So it's just not quite what it needs to be. So that's the Sunto 7 optical heart rate test as it relates to CrossFit and high intensity interval training. Stay tuned for more.